Hey coders, what's up? Chris here with episode 3 of how to make a shopping app. In the previous lesson, we had registered for a brand new Molten account, we had created and configured our Molten store, and then we had added some test products so that we can retrieve them through the API in our Xcode project. In this lesson, we're going to create our Xcode project and we're also going to add the Molten SDK into the project and then connect it to our Molten account that we created in the previous lesson. So here I am on the Molten website and under more, you can select getting started, which is where I am here. If you scroll down, you'll see there are instructions for iOS. Let's select Swift. And here are some instructions to install the iOS SDK. So if you're new to programming, SDK just stands for Software Development Kit. And essentially, it's just a bunch of files or classes that we can include into our Xcode project that is going to help us connect to and work with our Molten store. So there's two ways to include the SDK into your Xcode project. One is using a manager called CocoaPods. And another one is just downloading the SDK manually and adding it to your Xcode project. So I'm going to show you how to set up CocoaPods and then install the Molten pod. But before I do that, I just want to let you know what this option entails as well. So if you click download the iOS SDK, you're going to come to this GitHub repo. And if you're not familiar with this website, GitHub, it's where people can put their code and projects so that other people can download it and use it and also to contribute to it. So in this case, this GitHub page is showing the Molten iOS SDK. And if you've never used GitHub before, the easiest thing for you to do is probably just to hit download zip right here. And you're going to download the whole SDK as a zip file. Uh, and then when you finish downloading it, just unzip it and then you can drag it into your Xcode project. But the better way to do it and the recommended way, if we go back here, is to use something called CocoaPods. The reason is, if you do it the manual way where you download the files from GitHub, in the future when Molten updates the SDK, you're going to have to manually re-download it again uh, and update your project with it. Now imagine if you're using multiple GitHub libraries in your Xcode project. Now maintaining them becomes quite a headache. Now using something like CocoaPods helps with this. What it allows you to do is to have a pod file associated with your project and in that file you specify all of the frameworks and libraries that your project depends on and what version of those libraries. And with a simple update command, it's going to go and fetch all of those libraries and make sure it's got the right versions so that you don't have to do that manually. Now installing CocoaPods is a one-time thing. And then for each Xcode project, you just have to create a pod file in that project's folder. So we'll go through that as well. But first of all, let's install CocoaPods. You're in luck because I just got a brand new shiny iMac and I don't have CocoaPods installed. So we're going to be able to go through that together. Now, alternatively, a couple of great guides to install CocoaPods can be found on the official CocoaPods site under guides getting started uh, and then under installation. And another great one is on Ray Wenderlich's site, how to use CocoaPods with Swift. So I'll add these two links in the description below. Okay, so what you're going to do first is open up Terminal. So you can either press Command Spacebar and search for Terminal and open it up that way. Or if you go to your launch pad, it is, I believe, in Utilities, or Other, sorry, and it's this one right here, Terminal. So when you click that, it shows a little window like this. And all you have to do is type sudo gem install CocoaPods. Now hit Enter and it's going to ask you for your password. After you enter in your password, it might take a little while to get started as it did for me. I had to wait about maybe 40 seconds before I started to see anything on the screen, but I just cut out that waiting time in the editing so you didn't see any of it. But when it's finished installing, you should see something like this. The next thing you wanna do is type pod setup dash dash verbose. And that's going to let you see the progress as it's setting things up. So with those two commands, we are done setting up CocoaPods. And if you're not familiar with working in Terminal or this kind of looks complicated, don't worry because you only need to set up CocoaPods once. And then after that, as you're going to see soon, it's very simple to set up for each new Xcode project that you do. Now we're going to switch gears and set up our new Xcode project. So I'm going to open up Xcode and we're going to create a new Xcode project here. If you don't get this welcome dialog, just go up to File, New, 
project. And then we're actually going to create a master detail application. So the master side of things is going to show our table view listing all the products and the detail is going to be the product detail. So we're going to start with this and if you don't see any of these options make sure that you're looking under iOS application and you should see the master detail application. So I'm going to call the product name shopping app and make sure that the language is Swift, devices is iPhone and you have these unchecked. Let's click next and I'm just going to save it on my desktop. Okay, so now that we have the Xcode project created, we're going to go ahead and close the Xcode project because we're going to go back into terminal and we're going to set up the pod file for it. So let's close Xcode there or close the project. And this is where you might get a little lost because it might be different for you depending on where you saved your project. So I saved my project on the desktop as you can see here. So in terminal, we need to navigate to that folder. And so you're going to need to know a couple of commands, but I'm going to run them by you. So first of all, you can type in ls enter to see which directory you're in right now. So here I can see that I have applications, creative cloud files, desktop, documents. Desktop is the folder I want. This, these, this is listing out all of the folders in this current directory. Uh, if I open up my finder and I go into desktop and I press command up, I look at my file structure, you know, I can see all of these folders um, that are mirrored here. And so this folder that I'm in right now is basically my Chris folder. Now, if I want to go into the desktop folder, you can press CD space and then the folder name like that. So now if I hit LS, that's listing out all of the files and directories on my desktop. And if I go into here, you can see that that listing mirrors what I have here. Now take a look at this folder, that's the folder of my Xcode project. So I'm going to go CD shopping app. And now I'm inside that folder. And here I'm going to run my pod init command. So if I click that, this is inside my Xcode project. So I'm going to run by a couple of commands with you so that you can navigate to your own project folder. So you learned that LS was to list out the current contents of the directory. You learned that CD and then the directory name lets you go into that directory. Now cd dot dot lets you navigate out of the directory, or cd space dot dot rather. So now I'm back on my desktop if I hit ls. If I go cd dot dot again, now I'm back out a level again. So now I'm in the Chris directory, my uh, home folder. So depending on what you're seeing in terminal and which directory you're currently in, you can use those three commands to navigate to your Xcode project folder, depending on where you saved it. Okay, so for me, let me go back to my Xcode project folder. So CD space desktop. And you can even, if you know what folder it is, you can even specify it like that and start, jump directly into desktop slash shopping app. So if I hit LS now, I'm inside that Xcode project folder. Okay, so inside the project folder, I'm gonna type in pod init to set up CocoaPods for my project. And you can immediately see that pod file here in my project directory. So now we open up the pod file with our text editor. I wouldn't recommend using text edit because it's a rich text editor and it may screw things up if it adds fancy quotes into your pod file. So I use something like sublime text. So our pod file looks like this. What we're going to do is uncomment this line right here We'll change that to 9. And also, because we're using Swift, we're going to uncomment this guy as well, just removing the hash sign in front of that line. And then in the middle here between the target and the end tags, we're going to type in pod space, open up a set of single quotes, molten like that. I'm going to save it. I'm going to close this file. And then we're going to go back to terminal. And now I'm going to type in pod install. And what it's going to do is read that pod file and install the dependencies and the libraries that we need. Okay, so now it's done. If we go back into our project folder in Finder, we'll see that now it's got a shopping app.xc workspace. 
So from this point onwards, we want to be opening this file instead of the Xcode project. So let's double click the XC workspace file and it's gonna open up Xcode. So now we're ready for the next step. Because the molten libraries are written in Objective-C and this is a Swift project, we're going to have to add a bridging header to our project. We're going to go to under this folder shopping app. I'm gonna right click or control left click and let's choose new file and we're going to select header file under iOS source. Select the header file. You can name it bridging header like I'm doing here. Let's make sure to include it in this target here. Let's hit create. So in our bridging header, we need to specify inside here, hash import start an angle bracket and type in molten slash molten dot h and then the closing angle bracket. Save it. And now we have to configure our Xcode project to point to this file as the Objective-C bridging header. So we're gonna click this node right here, go under build settings, and let's search for here, objective. Okay, I'm not seeing anything, but there is a toggle here that says basic and all, so let's choose all. So I think that basic is hiding some of the options. So if we type in objective, if we scroll down and we look for Swift compiler, we're going to see it all the way down here. And under Objective-C bridging header, let's open that up. Um, actually, we're just going to double click here and let's specify the file, bridging header dot H. So whether it's a debug or release build, we're still going to use bridging header dot H. Okay, and finally, we're ready for the last step, which is to connect to our Molten store. So here you can see step two is to initialize the Molten SDK with this line here. And here is our store public ID. Now it's pretty handy. They've specified my store ID in here. So if you've already set up a store and you're viewing this, you should probably have your ID in here as well. Oh, and if you don't know where to get this public ID, you can just go to you scroll all the way up to my account and you go to account overview. For the store that you set up and you go to API keys, it's this one right here named client ID. So you can just take that one as well. And let's go back to the quick start. Uh, and then you can put it into this method here. So I'm gonna copy that. We're going to go into the master view controller dot swift and under the view did load, we're going to make some space right under the view did load and we're going to add that. At this point, our class doesn't recognize the molten class. So up here, we have to import molten. So let's hit command B to build the project. Okay, so I'm getting an error here. It says that the bridging header does not exist. So it can't find the bridging header. So let's take a look at our project folder. Uh, here's my shopping app project folder and I do see the bridging header in there but upon closer inspection it's looking for that bridging header in the root directory here of my project. See desktop slash shopping app slash bridging header dot h but for me I've got it one level deeper in shopping app and that's my mistake because I added it inside this group right here so there's my bridging header uh, but we can easily fix that if we go back into the build settings and instead of just putting bridging header there, let's put shopping app slash bridging header like that. Now let's press command B and now let's go up to product. Let's clean it and let's press command B to build it again. Okay, I've got another error. So let's see what this is. Use of unresolved identifier. So that was my client key. Ah, so actually we need to enclose this in quotes because set public ID, this method, I'm guessing it probably accepts a string, right? Set public ID, yeah, so it accepts a string and basically we just have to wrap that key in quotes. So now finally let's command B to build it again and build succeeded. So now we're ready to work with the Molten API in the next lesson when we retrieve all the products and we list it in our table view. Okay, I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye for now.